Okay, let's show it this way. This is our Muse score file, which created MP3 files, which we put up here where it says source files float. We then use that to make this movie. Using using magic, but we also used Reaper. So in our suite folder, we have magic files, Reaper files, and MuseScore files. But now we're doing a suite, so we also have a composition called Poise, which is over here, and it starts like this. And sure enough, we have an animation for poise that starts like this. And so now we have to have source files for poise. We have to have reaper for poise. We have to have magic for poise. There you go, QED. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 42 Core. In today's episode, we set out to, first of all, we rationalized our project folder, as we just showed you, because part of our aspect of composing in multiple dimensions, now we have two different compositions in play using three different tools and trying to keep it all in order under one project folder for the suite of compositions that we are working on. After we did that, we went down and we kept working on poise. We extended uh, further the part we called the arc intermezzo. We uh, added a new arc five and we finished using up our material from an earlier uh, works, work score. Get that up out of the way. So we did all that, which was good work, good work. We also made some more animation videos using that. And we began a new animation and made some test videos with that. We are now constrained by our attention to detail to make sure all of this has the same look and appearance. There we go. So as an example, again, referring to our work folder, here we have a, uh, a MIDI animation machine version of uh, Poise. which we like, we're going to show that to you. We have the Muse animation of Poise, which is the score. And then we have a magic animation of Muse. So we are chugging along, working in multiple dimensions. What we're going to do for you now is go to the live uh, MIDI animator, which is here. And we like looking at this view because it shows off the structure. Um, it shows off the sh structure of the piece. And we have to tend to try to turn the volume up. Hold your ears for a second. And here we go. I'll also turn off our mic.
So that concludes today's stream. What we like about looking at the MIDI point of view is you can really see the structure. And for example, when you, when we're uh, way down here, when we have the backbone playing, which is the blue, wherever it is, hello, there it is. Um, when we say backbone, you can really see that is a blue backbone, and, and these are jumping up and down on it. Um, and we can hear that when we play it. And then the, the backbone has quite a little romp here. It's like a little roller coaster or something with people riding it, holding their hands up, going, Wee! So our ideas for next time are to continue tuning the poise composition and animation. For example, when it adds some more parts, um, add some more scenes to the animations. We didn't show you the actual, but this is what it looks like. We have, um, we're working with the pastel shapes right now. This is the mic activated version. And then we also have something we call stencil corners. We wanna try, uh, just try an idea with that. And then also our float composition, we're starting to feel like going back to it. And, and there's a little bit of fine tuning we can do there as well. So tune in next time to our adventure. Do come back, do take care. Shout out to Dawson again, he stopped by. And keep on streaming.